This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to South Deerfield Frontier Regional. Tonight, an Intercounty League North matchup. It's the Frontier Red Hawks taking on the Franklin Tech Eagles. I'm Jeff Terrell, along with Sean Hubert. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. Great to have you with us tonight. A nice, nice weather night as opposed to last night or the night before. Thank God we're playing tonight, not a couple of nights ago. That would have been rough, Sean, but we got a nice football weather here. And the Franklin Tech Eagles come to town with a 2-3 and three record, taking on the 4-1 and one Frontier Red Hawks, who by virtue of their victory at Greenfield last week, last Friday night here on Bear Country, they are firmly in the catbird seat in the Intercounty League North right now. Yeah, conversely, Greenfield's in big trouble now. They've got three games left, and they're going to have to win all three of those and uh, hope for some help, actually, to get into the playoff picture. But uh, for the Red Hawks, absolutely, the beat goes on. And uh, again, very physical game last week against Greenfield, and uh, there were some issues, and everybody hates to complain about the uh, officiating, but... I've heard people talking about it all week long. And it yes. really was a game that just uh, the officials uh, kind of lost a, a little bit here and there. And, and it, again, you hate to say somebody would have won if it wasn't four. But in this case, uh, looked as though Greenfield, it would have been a different position for them coming down the stretch uh, if it weren't for some bad calls there. So uh, unfortunate for the way. But the Red Hawks, uh, again, they've got it going on again this year. And they just keep doing what they do. And uh, they, they keep running the ball the way that they run it. And now they've actually started to throw the ball here a little bit. Garrett DeForest actually had only thrown 12 passes in the first four games for Frontier. Last week he completed seven of those. And so, you know, he's completed almost as many attempted passes as he'd had all season long. Donovan Hoffman actually ended up being our player of the game. That kid hauled in five passes, and he looked good, too. So, hey, add the passing attack to this running game, and that's just going to spell trouble for every defense. They are very, very tough to beat. And Greenfield, you know, a decent offensive team. They were held to just that one touchdown in Frontier's 14-8 victory over the Greenway. Franklin Tech. Two and three, but their victories have come against really the, the weaker teams in the Air Canada League North. Uh, and, uh, you know, they come in at two and three. Uh, they beat Athol last week. Good for them. They should have beaten Athol last week. Athol only suited up 15 kids. The Red Raiders having a really tough goal of it. So the they come to town now. They really need what we would call a signature win. They haven't got it yet this year. Yeah, I'll go with the glass half full approach and I'll look at the numbers that put up against Athol last week in that big win. And again, knowing uh, Athol is kind of undermanned and uh, a lot of injuries down there right now. But Ian McClure had 156 yards and a pair of touchdowns in that one. And Bailey Young, we love to watch that kid run. We know how tough he is, 109 yards. He had a score in that one as well. So we know Franklin Tech can run the ball. Now, look at the defensive side. They've actually pitched two shutouts this year, Franklin Tech. They've only allowed one team to score more than 20 points against them. So, you know, look at some of those statistics and you think, well, maybe, but the eyeball test tells me that this one could get away in a hurry if they can't stop the run, and that's really all there's going to be to it. Well, we're about to get our answer. Kickoff is less than 10 minutes away. We will take a timeout here in our pregame show. We'll come back. We'll get you set for the opening kickoff. The Frontier Red Hawks, the Franklin Tech Eagles, live from South Deerfield. Friday Night Lights right here on Bear Country, 95.3, back after this. Both teams are out on the field right now, and the captains will be meeting at the center of the field very shortly for the opening coin toss as we get set for Franklin Tech at Frontier. A couple other games, three games involving uh, our local teams that we follow here at Bear Country. And Greenfield is at Mahar 
Now the green wave in the center is in orange. And Sean, I've been uh, I've been out sick a little bit the last couple of days. I've been a little out of the loop. I was obviously aware of the big storm that came through, and I know that the North Quabbin region was especially hard hit. And there was some question as to whether they'd be able to play that game tonight, but evidently they're good to go. It sounds like they are. Yeah, they were without power. I think they they did not have school down there today because of that storm and. There was some speculation about the field, but I uh, just uh, texted actually with uh, Gary Sack, so the starting quarterback Jake Sack's dad, he'll be there and uh, ask him to get us some updates from that one. So a uh, very important game, again, for both teams. Really, it's that time of the year where, uh, you know, if you want to try to get to that playoff mix, you've got to win out, and uh, Maher pretty much in the same boat. Yeah, those teams, Sean, pretty close, I think, in ability. I that, would say so. I, I think that's uh, maybe not exactly a coin flip game. Greenfield's kind of dinged up right now, especially at that I'm offensive sure backfield, so that could equalize it a little bit. If Greenfield was healthy, I'd give them the edge, but uh, you're right, Jeff, with the injuries that they've had, and uh, we'll see if Kilgore plays this week or not. He took a couple of big shots last week. We know Bobby Provost is out. And uh, they had some guys dinged last week. That was a tough game against Frontier. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that one works. We're at Mohawk, big one yeah. in the Tri-County League. If yeah. uh, you, you talk about signature wins, Mohawk got a lot of wins early. This would be their signature win if they can somehow upset Ware at home. Yeah, that's the one. I'll be getting some updates from that one here as well, so we'll pass them along to you as quickly as we can, and uh, we'll see if uh, they can get that signature win tonight. Frontier Regional Marching Band with the Star Spangled Banner in front of another nice crowd here. And of course, the home crowd here at Frontier is always strong. And a lot of visitors, of course, from Franklin County Tech. Tech and they're visiting white jerseys with navy blue pants and silver helmets. Frontier in the home, navy blue helmets and pants and the crimson red jerseys. Did you mention the socks? And Frontier has the, uh, rather Franklin Tech has the pink socks. It is October, Breast Can Cancer Awareness Month. But those socks haven't brought the teams that we've seen very good luck so far in October. Maybe tonight will be the night that they yeah. come through. Yeah, pink socks are 0 for 2 right now. We have the, the Mohawk team at home down when they played down at Frontier with the pink socks. And they lost in Greenfield last week with the pink socks. So, yeah, pink socks 0 for 2. Franklin Tech donning those tonight. Dylan Demers will be kicking for Franklin County Tech, has the ball on the 30-yard line. And Donovan Hoffman and Ido McMillan are the deep guys. They're backing around their own 15-yard line. Tech is kicking from our right, so Frontier will be moving left to right. Here in the first quarter, 12-minute quarters here in high school football, and we are set to go. Demers has a teed up, and we are ready to roll. And a high end over end kick. Chases McMillan to the 15, left hash mark across the 20, 25, finds a gap out across the 30 and across the 35 yard line. So decent field position for the Red Hawks to begin their opening drive of the game. First down and 10, right around their own 37, 38 yard line. Yeah, we've seen most teams not kicking deep to him back there because we know how quick he is. And a lot of times you kick to that intermediate area, and that's right about where the ball ends up if one of those mid guys ends up fielding it and gets knocked down right there. So good starting field position for the Hawks here. And it looks like they're going to go with Schreiber in at quarterback. We see him take snaps along with Garrett DeForest, so it's Schreiber right now. Well, and the ball popped out, but the play was whistled dead just as the ball was snapped. And we couldn't see Sean. There was just a, just a big... 
mass of people and the ball just kind of flew out of there. It was just kind of, yeah, that was a little bit odd. So it's a loss of a yard or two back to the 36 yard line, second down and long. I don't know if Garrett DeForest is, is injured. He, he's lined up in a slot oh, right. Out there. Okay. So they got Schreiber and a quarterback. And they're going to go to Edo McMillan. He's got the yardage and more. Right side into Tech territory. It's a foot race to the 30, to the 20. Cuts back. And finally Edo bottled McMillan up at the 10-yard line inside the 10. Yeah, all the way down almost to the 5. So Edo McMillan from the 37. That's 13 down to the 5. Another 45, 55, 58 yards. That's how easy those guys make it look. But now everybody's However, marching back. So, uh, yeah, let's see what's happening. There's a flag. Yeah. Some leaves down on the middle of the field, and that flag is about the same color. Yeah, this is the time of the year we always get tripped yeah. up because there are leaves from the nearby trees on the field. Yep. and uh, Blended right in there. Yeah, so that's unfortunate for Frontier and for Edo McMillan. Yeah, that's going to be a personal foul call against Frontier. So not only are they not going to have the ball in the Franklin Tech red zone, but they're going to have second down in very long. Well, and that is one of the things that has kind of plagued the Red Hawks this year is they do commit penalties, and it hasn't hurt them in the game yet. But, it, you know, that right there, that's a big penalty. It had first and goal inside the five. It should, it should, it should be second down. Okay. We had, the side, we had the mark on the side saying second down. Second and 12 for the Red Hawks. And the pitch goes to Garrett DeForest. He'll try the Garrett left side. DeForest, he brings it out across the 40-yard line up to the 42. So a nice game there for Garrett. But It'll be third down now the for the Techie, uh, for the uh, Frontier Red Hawks. Garrett DeForest Garrett was five, a fullback, a running back five, last year. Seven. And uh, graduation, the quarterback spot opened up and he was the natural guy to take over. He's done a fine job there, but now they're running both he and McMillan out of the backfield in that double wing. Third down and six. It's DeForest, left side, bottled up, the stacked up nicely. That attacking defense of Tech. Eagles. Several kids in there with a nose for the ball. The Hawks down. That's a short gain for DeForest. It'll be fourth down now. We'll see what the fourth Hawks elect to do here. Well, that's a fine turn of events if you're Franklin Tech. You know, again, that big run all the way down to the five-yard line and momentum and everything crowds into it. And then the penalty, and now you've stopped them fourth down. Looks like they're going to line up as if they're going to go here. And the two deep men have to run up to the line of scrimmage, Ball's and the out. ball is fumbled, picked up by Fumble Frontier, but brought down immediately. And now a great turn of events here as Tech frontier. is going to get the ball in Frontier territory. Oh, man, did they mess that up. They really did. Just, that looked disjointed, and even right from the very first play, again, they brought in Bashaw, quarterback. We're not sure yet. He was just kind of running uh, Garrett DeForest out of the backfield, the double wing. I don't think we saw Alec Kirkendall out there. I didn't see Samaski out there either. So just tried something a little bit different there on offense than what we've seen. And that just did not work. Franklin Tech stopped him. 42 yard line, first down and 10. Bashad out of the shotgun. He is back to pass. Heavy rush. They set up a screen. It's complete to McClure. And McClure tries the left side. He runs out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. A short game, but Frontier was coming hard. And they were able to gain about five yards there. Second down coming yep, up. Nice job by Bashaw. Pressure coming. Just flipped it over the linebacker's head that was coming through. Found his receiver out in the flat. And a nice job by him to get to the outside. Good foot speed and gain a five. So, yeah, second and five here for Franklin Tech. Split far to the wide right is Dante Rosewarn. Upham is in the far left position. And the pitch right. fumbled uh, to McClure. That was a bad play. Wait a minute. One official you know was saying I, incomplete. There was an early whistle, and I think he's going to call that a forward pass. Yeah. Because as soon as that ball hit the ground and they were scrambling incomplete for it, pass. I heard that whistle. Yep. They're going to say that was an incomplete pass, not a fumble. I thought it was a pitch to the running back, McClure, but incomplete pass. I had to pitch that thing forward, I guess, according to the side judge. So it'll be third down and about five for the Eagles. The ball uh -huh. right around the 38-yard line. They lost a yard there on that somehow. There you go, shotgun formation. Bashaw takes a snap. He's back to pass, throws it on the right side at a sliding attempted catch. Did he get it? He incomplete. It was low. Hunter Wozniak, the intended receiver. Edo McMillan on coverage. It'll be fourth down now for Tech. Nice job by Wozniak. That ball was thrown behind him, and he darn near made that. He was double covered. He had a guy right on his back and a guy flashing in front. Nice job to come back, try to get that thing, and 
They ended up calling it incomplete, but good throw and a good effort by Wozniak to corral that thing. Fourth down now for the Eagles. Again, the ball right around the 37-yard line or so of Frontier. They're going to go here. Definitely four down territory for them. Again, shotgun formation. Bashan's going to send Wozniak in motion to the right. He's back to pass the inside, giving to McClure. Nothing doing. Frontier waiting for him. They stack him up at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a loss of a yard. And they turn it over on down. Yeah, it looks as though he might use a, lose a yard or two on that carry. And so again, an interesting start to this one. The Red Hawks, a pretty big favorite here at home. And they just look disjointed on offense, except for that one play. Edo McMillan ran for 80 yards, but that thing was called back on a penalty. So Tech forces a punt. They get the four and out. They get the ball back. Now they go four and out. Frontier will start this on their own 40. Just after 7 o'clock, you're listening to High School Football on WPVQ, WPVQ HD, Bear Country 95.3. Greenfield, a fumble on the snap. Big battle for the ball. It is it's covered up by Jake Dodge there. But what is going on with this frontier? We've had at least two, maybe three fumbles and a total of four plays that have just been a mess. Yeah, they just don't look sharp right now. And again... Not what we expected as we see Garrett DeForest come out of the game right now. And Dodge will stay out there at number 15. He is lined up in the slot and now the Franklin Tech defensive line jumped over. And that's going to go against the Eagles and that's going to step them off five yards. So from second and 12 to second and seven. Yep, little help right there. First penalty of the game was that 15 yarder against the Hawks. That's the first penalty of the game against Franklin Tech. That's a five yarder. And give them about second and uh, we'll call it second and seven here now. Yeah. And now it's going to be a penalty on Kirkendall, the fullback, as he stumbled forward a little bit ahead of the snap. So marked him five yards back, and now back to second and twelve. Again. Yeah, they just uh, <laughs> gave it right back, and Kirkendall. I'm thinking he was either uh, going to be the ball carrier, or he was looking to fire out and hit somebody. He <laughs> just a snap uh, too quick off the line uh, to jump and. Uh, easy call there for the referee, five so, yarder. So they are using uh, Jake Dodge now at quarterback for Frontier. And now, now the ball's out and again. And the ball is out again. One of the Franklin Tech kids said they got it, but they did not. One of the Frontier linemen had it. They just can't get into their offense right now. This is, um, this is kind of stunning, actually. This is incredible. Yeah. Third down and 15 now as the ball is all the way back to the 36 yard line. They had that long run that was negated by a penalty. Other than that, lots of fumbles. And now they go to McMillan. He has it on the right side and he has the first down and more right side into Franklin Tech territory. No flags this time that we can see. It'll be first and 10 at the 38. Now that was going to be the problem is the speed of Edo McMillan. We saw it once and then the penalty. Give him, let's see, 15. They're going to spot that thing down. 37 yard line. So 28 yards on that rip. And that one will count. He had that big one for 50 plus yards that uh, was negated by the personal foul. So McMillan kind of bails him out there. First down and 10 from the Tech 37 yard line. DeForest now back in the quarterback, rolls to the left, heavy rush, deep ball right side, it is caught. Ripped out of bounds down at the 10 yard line as he hooks up with Jack Vasilio. 10 from the 37, 27 yards, and what a nice throw and what a nice catch by Vasilio. And he brought the ball inside the 15 yard line we'll call the 12 yard line first and 10 from there they bring him up to force in at quarterback coming in motion mcmillan he'll take it on the pitch right looking for a seam not a lot there franklin tech does a good job of stretching it out he's brought down right around the 11 yard line so maybe just a gain of about a yard it'll be second down and nine from there yeah you can see this tech defense has some team speed they had a couple three guys chasing him laterally and Edo can usually get to the outside from there but they were able to track him down and as you said jeff gain of about a yard there we'll call it second and nine from the 11 yard line so again they can get a first down inside the one And the pitch this time goes to Josh Samaski. He'll take Josh it over Samaski the left side, brings carry. it down just outside the five yard line over left tackle before he gets roughed up down there. It'll be third down coming up. 
Hunter Wozniak on the stop for the Eagles. Gain of a couple. Third, Third and down six and six. Frontier. The ball is at the seven yard line. DeForest brings him up. And the handoff goes to Samaski. Left side cuts through. Still going. He's yeah, so down he inside the five. Looks like he is short of the first down by about a yard or two. Fourth down now coming up for the Hawks. Yep, we'll give Samaski about seven yards on his two carries. And now. Fourth down. Gonna bring a fourth down about fourth and about, about two yards here, we'll call it. As we just heard over the PA. Fourth down. For Frontier, DeForest, the give, right side, McMillan cuts through. He's in to the end zone for the touchdown. Edo McMillan scores, it is six nothing Red Hawks. Yeah, again, you just uh, kind of delayed the inevitable there with that penalty. Franklin Tech did a nice job on Frontier's first possession, except for that one play, and drew the penalty. That thing came back, but this time, Red Hawks take it pretty much right down the field. One pass completed by Garrett DeForest, 27 yards, and all the rest was Edo McMillan and into the end zone as well. Three carries, 34 yards, and... Hawks will go for two. And they go right to the center of the line, struggling, and he did get in. See who that came up? It was Samaski. who was able to get to the end zone. The two-point conversion is good. We'll take a timeout, 5.30 to play here in the first quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it's Frontier 8 and Franklin Tech nothing. Well, it took them a while to get going for sure, but Frontier, after really being their own worst enemy there for a while with a very impressive drive. Mostly with the legs of McMillan. Edito has it teed up now on the 40 yard line. Set to boot it away. The Hawks now leading by a score of eight to nothing. McMillan set to kick it. And hits a high but short kick. It is fumbled and then jumped on by the man who fumbled the ball at the 30 yard line. So disaster nearly averted for the Eagles. They'll have a first and 10 from their own 30 yard line or so. Yeah, you wouldn't want to turn that over there after Frontier just scored. And it is unfortunate Franklin Tech got the ball at the Frontier 40 yard line and not able to move it from there. So that might be one when you look back as far as changing the momentum of the game. Boy, they had some momentum from defense and just couldn't convert that to offense at all. No, so they, had their, they had the pass downfield that was just starting to throw in a little bit to Wozniak, would have been good for a first down, down around the 20, 25 yard line or so. Now in under center with a full house backfield behind him. And the handoff goes McClure on the left the side. McClure. And Ian takes it for a gain of about four to the Just 34, it'll be second top. down and gain six. He lost a couple yards on his first yeah, carry, so a couple carries, six. two yards now for Ian. And had a big week last week against the Red Raiders. 156 yards, pair of touchdowns. Yeah, the Eagles had nearly 400 yards in total offense in that one. Yeah, 292 yards rushing. Oof. That's a that's a nice work right there. Yeah. Second down and long. And the handoff. This time looks like that's Bailey Young Good coming run. through. Bailey Young, and Bailey Young brings the ball, popped loose late, but he was already down. And that'll be good for a first down up the 44-yard line. Hard to believe that kid's finally a senior, Bailey Young. We've been watching this guy tote the ball for Franklin Tech for a few years, and that's true. Boy, one of the toughest kids we've ever seen. We take that. We saw that kid take a shot in the midsection. Took him about whole half time to shake that thing off, and almost immediately took another shot to the midsection. We thought, oh, he's got to be done. Kid finished the game. Tough kid. From the 44-yard line, first down and 10. They're going to go back to McClure. Not, not much there. He did get a yard up to the 45, McClure and then got driven Perry. back by several Red Hawk Andrew players. Logan, Donnie Hoffman on a stop for the Hawks. Donovan Hoffman was among those in on the stop, the also yard, helping out. Number 66, Andy Logan. That'll make it second down in nine from the 45. Tech moving right to left here in the first. It's eight nothing Frontier. McMillan with a short TD run. Samaski the conversion run. Shaw rolling to the right. Steps up, zings it, high pass. He's looking for Colby Melu down at the 
Frontier 40-yard line, but that pass was well over Colby. Sad will be third and nine. Yeah, a little juice on that one, but Shaw, again, just a junior. Not a big kid, 5'10", saves a buck 40, but some arm strength there. He really flung that thing down the field, but well overthrew Colby Malu. Nice to see Colby back on the field. He was injured last year, and early on, missed the entire season. 6'3", 185 pounds. He's a senior this year. Nice to see him back out there. Third and nine. Pitch goes to Bailey Young. He'll try the left side, looks to turn the corner. A late burst of speed. He'll be short of the first down, we think. He got, well. Pretty close. Well, they marched him up a little bit. We'll see where they actually put it down. I think it is going to be a little bit short. But do they go here? The ball now is in frontier territory, just barely. The ball's at the 48. And they are about two, three yards shy. Well, they need to get to the 46. This is one of those junctures in the football game. Three and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. You're down by eight. You know how explosive this Red Hawk offense is. Do you take the chance here, try to possess the ball, and you know, possibly dent the scoreboard? Fourth down and three from the 48 yard line. Who's gonna come up to the line of scrimmage? Pasha. Oh, we jumped. Oh, Frontier started the jump. No flag, they're gonna go to Bailey Young. Right side, Bailey he has Young the first down. First down tack just inside the 45 yard line of Frontier, so they'll move the stack. That's a great call by Joe Gamash. You know, again, you're, that's a juncture where you can look back at and think, oh, I, you know. We turned, turned it over there, and uh, if we hadn't, you know, that kind of thing, but they get the first down, Bailey Young, a big run, and it looked like Frontier was gonna give it to him. See the motion, but no flag. Bowden Smith, McClure, and Young. Young is the eye back. And the handoff goes to Bowden Smith, the fullback up the middle. Nice game for him. Bowden Smith on a carry. He's going to bring it inside the Red Hawk 40-yard line down to the 39. Second down coming up. Yeah, yeah nice first down carry the there. So now we've seen Ian McClure, we've seen five, Bailey Young, and now five. Smith out of the backfield. Nice run there by Dom. It'll be second down and about five. We're down to 2.29 to play here in the first quarter. 8-0 Frontier. Again, a short... Touchdown run by Ito McMillan and the conversion run by Josh Samaski. Rashad brings him up. Three men behind him up on the split wide right to the right. On a sweep right, it goes to McClure. Ian turns the corner. He's got the first down inside the 35 yard line of Frontier, knocked out of bounds Very down there. Another hey, first down for the Eagles. Uh, McClure hadn't had a lot of success, three carries just two yards, but that one you could see him, he, he kind of had that afterburner. You could see that that second gear kick in and once he saw his hole just burst through it, another first down there for Franklin Tech. So a nice drive going for them right now. Again, down eight nothing, just under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Snap goes back. They go to Bailey Young, hit in the backfield. He did a little bit of a spin move to try to keep the play alive, but everyone was coming at him, and he's dropped for a loss, Sean. Yep, not much he could do there. He had three carries for 21 yards, and that one's going to lose him, so let's see where they mark him. him loss of two on that one. Yep. Yeah, just nowhere to go on that. Loss of a couple yards. Ball will go back to the 36-yard line. So second down and about 12 from there. We're down to a minute 20 to play here in the quarter. Frontier settles in on D. Franklin Tech breaks the huddle. Pasha looks over the D, settles in her center, takes a snap, play action, throws over the middle, and that is caught. <laughs> and he brings, that's that Melo, the it tight end, Malu. he caught it, and he brought two or three different tacklers his way. And uh, let's see how close he got to that first down marker. Uh, he's about a yard and a half, two yards shy. Third and two for yeah, and as you said, Jeff, they were trying to make that tackle, and then uh, he ended up carrying a bunch of people for another extra yard or two there. So, yeah, nice third down here, third and one here for Tech. Third down and short, just inside the 35-yard line. They go to Bailey Young, Bailey Young and he'll go over right tackle, and he has the first stop. down. Good for an eagle first down. And he's very close to the 20-yard line, so... Yeah, just outside the 20 and a fresh set of downs for Franklin Tech. Franklin Very Tech impressive drive here. Tech from the that, we'll see if they get line. one more playoff before the end of the quarter. Yeah. Down to uh, 19 seconds here. Yeah, they may get this one off before the end of the quarter. As you said, Jeff, yeah, fine drive run right now. 
They go to Young again, a big gap. He takes off on the right side, and he has it inside the 15-yard line. And let's see, looks like that'll be the last play of the quarter. It is. I'll tell you what, timeout. It's probably the worst thing for Franklin Tech because they are moving right now. We'll take a break. End of one here in South Deerfield and on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 8, Franklin Tech 0, but the Eagles on the move. Second quarter action next on Bear Country 95.3. Eagles will start the second quarter with a second and one from the Red Hawk 11 yard line. All right, second down and about one or two from the 11 yard line for Franklin County Tech as they begin playing the second quarter. A pitch goes to Bailey Young, left side, turns the Bailey corner, Young lunges, the he has the first down inside the 10 yard line and it'll be first down and goal, Tech and Eagles. Bring the Tech running right at him, not afraid of this frontier defense. It's a pretty stout all season long. And right there, Bailey Young just diving for the first down, getting a couple extra yards. Now first and goal, Franklin Tech. Ball looks to be right around the eight yard line of Frontier. It's on the far side hash mark. They break the huddle, but yeah, you're right, Sean. They're just gone right down the field on these guys. Bashaw looks over the D. Three running backs behind him. Yeah. And looks Hawks. Flag on a play. Looked like one of the Frontier offside players had jumped frontier. offside, and he did. So they will mark that off from the eight yard line. Five yard penalty, Five -yard penalty down to the goal. three. First and goal now from there. Let's see, Mike Churchill just checked in from Mohawk. Into the first quarter, where it leads six to nothing. First and goal. TD run by Raheem Hanfeld. Okay, hold that thought one second. And they go to Bailey Young again on the left side, lurching towards Bailey the end zone. Did carry. not Back quite get there. Hawks. Close though, he got down to about the one, maybe inside the one. So Franklin Tech. Second and goal. It's gonna have three shots here to make it about a yard. Yep, second and goal from about just outside That's the one. And just to finish that thought, Ryan Duclos of Mohawk blocked the extra point. So Ware leads six to nothing at the end of the first quarter up in Buckland. Duclos, one of the Mohawk players who goes to Turner's Falls High School, part of that co-op program. All right, second and goal from the one. And the handoff on the right side. Did not get in. Frontier stacked him up. Bowden Smith, the fullback, did not, Dominic tried, but he got down inside the one, it was stopped now, it'll be third down and goal. Yep, getting a little bit dicier right now, but you still have two shots at it. Smith just tried to bully his way in and just denied. Third down and goal, inside the one yard line. Frontier leading eight nothing, they like to keep it right there, they need to stop them two more times here, see if they can do it. And the snap goes back. The handoff to Bailey Young over Bailey right Young guard. And it's a touchdown. Eagle. Delayed call, but it is a touchdown. One yard touchdown run by Bailey Young. It's 8 6. Well, Jeff, we weren't quite sure what to expect from this game. We kind of thought the Red Hawks would take this and run away with it. And now, just inside the second quarter, it's 8 6. Franklin Tech, we'd assume, would go for the two point conversion here to tie this thing right now. We'll see what they do. They will, in fact, go for two. Bashaw, the quarterback, brings them up. Attempt a two point conversion. Looks over the D. The pitch goes to Young on the left side, cuts it back in, and he gallops into the end zone. The two point conversion is good. We'll step aside for a timeout. 9.48 to play here in the first half, and on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, we're now tied at eight on Bear Country 95.3. Number 30, Dylan Demers, the kickoff for Franklin Tech. Back to receive for Frontier is number two, Edo McMillan.
Devers to kick it. Sam Hebert on a return. And the ensuing kickoff after the Red Tech Oaks touchdown and two-point conversion is kind of a line drive taken by one of the up men who quickly lost his footing and was driven down to the 35-yard line. That's where Frontier will take over, first down and 10. Not a lot offensively for the Hawks other than Edo McMillan so far, Sean. Yeah, two big plays, and one of those called back on a penalty against the Hawks. So other than that, yeah, not an awful lot going on. Samaski just a couple carries, and... It's all Edel McMillan and Garrett DeForest's one uh, completed pass. First down and 10, DeForest is back to pass. Him. Heavy rush, escapes the sack, and, and then gets dropped down right around the line of scrimmage. Brought down by number 40, Dominic Bowden-Smith. Dominic Bowden-Smith, the Bowden linebacker the with the second stick. It'll be second and 10. That well, was a nice job by DeForest to be able to escape that pocket. It looked like they were going to get him for a loss of four or five. He was able to squirt forward. And Took a pretty good shot there, just back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain, they'll call that. The Tech defense, uh, those guys are pretty quick, Sean. They are pretty quick, yeah, and again, this is a pretty quick frontier team, so they're, they're yeah. on their own right now, absolutely. Yeah, they, they just fly to the ball, and they're very aggressive. Second down and 10, DeForest. The give is to McMillan on the right side. Cuts back towards the yeah, left, brings it out across the 40, up to the 41-yard line, a nice gain of about six there. Third down and four for the Hawks. McMillan now with 40 yards on just four carries. Leads the team season 624 yards coming into this one with five touchdowns as well for Ito. Well, bro, yeah, you're right, Sean. We're getting towards late October. That's when we start looking at players getting close to that 1,000-yard uh, mark. Yeah, he's getting there. Third down and four. It goes to McMillan again on the right side on the pitch, and he's got the first Ito down. McMillan Brings it all the way up to the 49-yard line. Nice gain of about eight there. It'll be first and ten for the Hawks. Yeah, barring an injury, I think it would be safe to say Edo McMillan can put his name on that banner. Yep. The thousand yard banner. As long as he stays healthy, that kid runs for 100, 100 and a half every game anyway. He can bust one at any time, just so fast. Edo, eight to play here in the first half. Eight, eight tie. Touchdown runs by McMillan, a frontier. Young, the Franklin Tech, two conversion runs, successful. Back to pass is the force. Heavy rush. He'll run, and he's going to get run out of bounds for a loss. And again, there's that speed of the tech defense. I think you're at the force. He he's used to being able to outrun the defenders, and he hasn't been able to, on that play. He was not able to do it. No, and that was Colby Malu that came around the backside and was chasing him, and he didn't realize how close he was. He kind of took a quick peek and then realized, uh oh. He kicked it up to another gear, but by then there were three other guys for Franklin Tech, and they just ran him out of bounds. Loss of about two yards. Yeah, they're, they're not the biggest team, you know, physically, but very fast, and they just they fly to the ball. Now Frontier sets up. Second down and 12. DeForest gives to McMillan. Slithers his way through the center line. Breaks a tackle. Bailey Young. And now rips him down. Never did tackle him, but they did stand up enough to draw the whistle. <laughs> that was like a street fight there for yeah, a minute at the end. It really was. <laughs> the guys were going at it. He never, McNeil never went down. He never got tackled, but. But he did bring the ball into Franklin Tech territory down to the 47 yard line. Third down and about six. 55 yards for Edo now. Six carries. Of course, he has the touchdown for the Hawks. Tied 8 8 right now. 7 15 to play in the first half. Garrett DeForest brings him up. Wide to the right is the tight end Hoffman. They're going to give it to McMillan. Bounces to the outside. Looks to turn Ryan the corner. Malu. No, Malu was able to stack him up and dri drive him down for a loss. Back to the 40, uh, back to the midfield stripe, actually. Yeah. Don't see that happen to Edo McMillan very often, but Colby Malu got a mitt on him and he was able to hold him up. I'm not sure if he ended up making the tackle because, again, you had two or three defenders there at the end of the play. But Colby Malu was the first one there for sure. Going to be fourth down and eight from the 49-yard line. Big play here for this Tech defense. And Frontier is setting up to run a play here. So the deep men of Tech will now will come up. Now they drop back to Forrest now in punt formation. Oh, oh he missed it. And just 
hit it off his foot, a little spiral downfield. He did take a nice frontier roll, but that was not the punt that Garrett DeForest was looking to get off his foot. That was one of the uglier punts we've ever seen, Sean. He dropped the ball, and it kind of spun on him on its way down to his foot. As he got his foot up to it, that thing, it almost like he kicked it off the very end of the football, at the toe. And so from the 49 down to the 30, <clears throat> that's a 19-yard punt, Sean. Yeah, that thing and squirted off his foot. He he nearly whiffed on it. Nearly he blocked, nearly, nearly whiffed. whiffed it. Yeah, that was not that was not that was good right there. And Franklin Tech's got to feel pretty good here with six minutes to play in the half. They had a very impressive drive last time. They go right back to Bailey Young. Bailey Young and ball ball well, Frontier out, says they have the ball. Ball came out and they do have it, but I think he was down. Yeah, Bailey Young. They are going to say that Young was down for no gain at the 30-yard line. The ball did pop out, John, but it was Check he was ball, already down. Of course, last week there was that huge Can controversy. Carlos Cardinales picked up an apparent Frontier fumble. Well, I, it wasn't a. It was, it was a fumble. A fumble right. we, we, we've seen the video. The ball completely popped out. It was a scoop and score by Cardinalis of Greenfield. Called back. Inadvertent basically, whistle. Basically, yeah, inadvertent whistle. Yeah. So it was basically no play, and that was a bitter pill to swallow. Oh, look at that. The ball pops loose, and Frontier's got it. Well, they might call that a forward pass. You could see Bashaw as he came out from under center. The ball came up and it flew right. Well, no, okay, flew it right over his head. Yep. They are going to call it a fumble, and then he's going to be down at that point. So the Red Hawks are going to get the turnover. Just inside the 30-yard line of Tech, and they have a short field to work with here with 5.23 to play here in the half. Yeah, Bashaw never had his mitts on that ball from center. The snap came up, and the ball just kind of climbed right up his body, and he was picking it off the top of his helmet. And by then... He got hit, the ball flew out, and the Red Hawks, wow, yeah, short field for them here. Well, we'll see if Frontier now can take advantage of that miscue. Quick oh. pass on the right side to Hoppin, pass who got belted immediately, and Melu nearly, it would have been a pick six, too. He nearly got his mitts on that quick little pass on the right flat. Yeah, it'll go as a completed pass. I think it's actually going to lose a yeah, yard. A yard. Yeah, it will. Second but Melu, yeah, he flashed his arm out there, and... Boy, I'll tell you, if he had a second more to think about that, he might have been able to take that thing the other way for six. But well, he would, he whoa. definitely would. If he had caught it, especially in stride, he would have scored. Yeah. I don't think anybody would have caught him. Second down and 11 from the 30. Pitch goes to Samaski. Nice Samaski tackle. Nice tackle by Bailey Young. Bailey brings him down stop. for a gain of about one or two. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, they're just going to nudge him up. We'll give him a yeah, yard. Yeah. But We're going to give him to the 29 yard line. Yeah. Play, third and 11. It's a smidge, yeah, so third and long. So, tech defense again. They've they got to feel good about where they are in this game right now. Don't feel good about that turnover and giving Frontier the short field. But we're looking at an 8 8 game right now with four and a half to play in the, in the first half. And a long third down here for the Hawks. Hawks come to the line of scrimmage on third down and long. DeForest under center. They go back to McMillan with some blockers. He'll try the right side and gets pulled back well flag. shy of the first down. That's definitely a flag. Yeah, that's not a leaf. No, it's kind of tough to tell. There are a bunch of leaves out there, and they're about the same color, but yep. that was definitely a flag, and we'll see which way that goes. That was a long third down play, which gained about four or five yards. It would bring up a fourth and about five. We'll sort this thing out. It's going to go against Tech. Face oh, it's mask. a face mask. Uh, that's going to cost them 15. And that's going to be a first down for the and Red Hawks. And a first down. We'll see. 15-yard penalty and a first down for Frontier. Yeah. Where will the ball now be spotted? It's from the point Direction of the infraction. It's going to... That's a big penalty right there, Jeff. That would have brought up a fourth and maybe five or six. Instead, it's going to be third down, third and 30 one. yard. McMillan to the right. The give, Samaski. He got hit at the line of scrimmage, but kept yeah, it going Samaski over the left game. tackle. I don't think he got there. And they're going to call. Oh, they're going to give Jerry him the spot. Yep, they, got it. Right. Yep, they stopped the clock briefly, but they do give him a first down inside the 20 yard line. The ball's around the 17. First and 10 for the Hawks, down to 335 to play here in the second quarter in an 8 8 tie. Yeah, clock not a problem right now for the Hawks. They have all their timeouts. DeForest calls the signals in motion to the right. Play action, rolls to the right. Passes caught out of the backfield, but 
Tackled immediately by number 30, Dylan Demers. It was Kirkendall with the catch, wasn't yep. it? Kirkendall, the fullback, 45, but just a short gain of one. Ball's uh, see, on the 12-yard line or so. Second down and long. Three minutes to play here in the half. Our Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up. DeForest. Drops the ball, picks it up, and gets just bowled over as soon as he picked up that football. Got hit by numerous guys, including Melu. And Frontier's going to have to burn a timeout here, Sean, with 2.39 to play. We'll step aside for a quick 30-second break. High school football on Bear Country, 95.3, back after this. Well, now the ball back outside the 15-yard line, Sean, after Garrett Forrest took the snap and the ball just ended up on the ground immediately. He got his mitts on it, but then just got bowled over. So some good runs here by Frontier, but they have really struggled to run the offense the way they like to run it. Yeah, and really right from the get-go, too, Jeff. Again, that first uh, possession that they had just it looked a little disjointed, and then they had a couple of different guys in at quarterback, and... They finally went back to DeForest and it's run a little bit better since then, but Frontier, I mean, Franklin Tech, playing some pretty good defense here tonight. Frontier, Frontier, Frontier is used Schreiber, DeForest, and Dodge all at quarterback, mostly DeForest. And Dodge only for a snap or two. Yeah, started with Schreiber, and then, uh, yeah, that just wasn't working, so. Again, Franklin Tech would like to keep Frontier off the board here with 2.39 to play in the half. Third down and 11. Ball around the 15. And it's going to go to Vasilio. And Jack brings it down to around the 20 yard line. Austin DeMers on a stop. Short of the first. It's going to be fourth down now. Fourth and about seven. Yeah, we'll give him a gain of five. So, yeah, clock rolling, 220 to play here in the half. And obviously, Frontier goes here on fourth down, but yeah, fourth and, fourth and seven here. 15-yard line. Ball's on the 15-yard line of the Eagles with two minutes to play here in the half. Fourth down and about six. They're going to go shotgun. DeForest rolls to the right. Heavy yeah, rush, and he's going forward. down. Back at the 25-yard line. Madeira. What a huge play for the Franklin Tech defense. Garrett DeForest Eagles never had a chance. Brooks Medeiros, number 52, the linebacker with the sack. And it's first down going the other way. That was just a great play for Franklin Tech. Again, the turnover inside their own 30-yard line. And you're thinking, oh, the Hawks are going to pounce on this thing. They're going to score, and they're going to go in, you know, halftime up a score. But good defense and a couple of mistakes by the Hawks. And two minutes to go. Now Franklin Tech has a shot to take this the other way. First down and 10. Handoff goes to Bailey Young on Bailey the left Young side. Squirts Bailey. through, breaking tackles, little spin move. I'll tell you what, it's a nice run, Sean. He got hit in the backfield, but ended up making a nice gain out of it. Looked as though he was going to get stopped behind the Bailey line of scrimmage. Five, and you're right, five. Jeff, we'll give him five on that. 51 yards here for Bailey Young, 11 carries in the first half. Tough, tough runner. And yeah, the ball goal. is brought outside the 30. We'll spot him out the 31 yard line. Second down and five. Tech does have all their timeouts if they were to choose to try to use some. They need to get to the 36 to keep this going here. Inside give, and it's a big run for a first down on the left side to Ian McClure. McClure out across the 40-yard line to the 41. And hold the phone. Are we going, we're coming back? I'm going to say, yeah, that would have been his best run of the day. He had four carries for 10 yards. He got... 10 on that, but yep, we're coming back the other way. Yep, it's a hold against the Eagles, so that'll erase that first down. Well, they would have had a first down outside the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line, so you know, basically midfield, which opens up a lot of things. Now, yeah. they're going to be spotted back well inside their 30-yard line, and that makes their options a little more limited. Yeah, in a minute 13 to play now, you may not want to be quite as aggressive as you might have been. Ball back at around the 22-yard line now. And the handoff is going to go right back to McClure. This time he'll try the right side. Frontier, though, waiting for him. Just a short gain. Out near the 30-yard line. Tech is not going to use any of their timeouts right now, so it looks as though they'll be happy going into halftime with this 8-8 tie. 
Yep, under a minute left, and Frontier not taking any timeouts here either. They could, they could have maybe burned a few timeouts here, and uh, third down and long, hold it two more times to get the ball back, but they're just gonna let this clock go down to 40 seconds. Third down and eight. And the ball back inside the 30 yard line. And the handoff goes to McClure. He has on the left side a flag comes in at the very end of the play as McClure was going down. 19 seconds left. He was stopped shy of the first down. Yeah, it looks as though they give him a gain of about four or five on the run. But we'll see here, as you said, 19 seconds remaining. And looks like maybe another penalty against Tech right here. Let's see. No, no, a point against the Hawks. No, it was against Tech. Let's see here. Yeah, they're talking to Frontier. They, they're asking Don Gordon what he wants. If he wants the down or the yardage. Holding on. It's a hold tech. against Tech. 10 yard penalty. So 40 yards and penalties against Franklin Tech here in the first half. Four flags thrown against them. Frontier's been penalized three times for 25 yards. So if you're Frontier, after this third down play, call, call a timeout. Well, with the 19 seconds, yeah, again, you, you would have the opportunity if you stop them here quick. Yeah. Force I mean, a this punt. Is, this down. is third and yeah. so long. Yeah. You might get your mitts back on the yeah, ball, at least for a punt return. And you could, yeah. You know, you never know. You never know. It's a, it's a very close game. I, I, I would be very aggressive here with the clock. If you're Frontier, I mean, absolutely, yeah. Stop and call it. We'll see if that's what they do. Under center is Basha. And he will give on the right side. Short run. gain and that'll end the half. They're not going to stop the clock here. Would have been four, it is four. Well, Very actually with the penalty. The carry, the force on a stop. Three seconds, two, one. That will do it. Halftime here in South Deerfield and our score. We got a good one here in South Deerfield. On the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. The Frontier Red Hawks eight, the Franklin Tech Eagles eight. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Welcome to the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, Dave Reno, 8-8 eight, eight tie, Franklin Tech and Frontier here at halftime. Sean, we got a good one here tonight. Not what I thought I'd hear you be saying at halftime right now, 8-8 eight, eight tie. You know, we talked about it a little bit before the game and a little bit off the air and just it just didn't look like a good matchup on paper, honestly. And we've seen the Red Hawks over the last few weeks and uh, boy, they've been running the ball well. The defense has been strong and they came out here tonight a little bit flat. They made a couple of mistakes early and then uh, Franklin Tech gained some uh, confidence and all of a sudden they moved the ball down the field, put one in and get the two point conversion, tied this thing up. They've got to feel really good about this right now. Tech put up some good offensive numbers a week ago, but it comes sort of with an asterisk. It came against a, an AFL team that's 0-5. It's really struggled this year. But now they're going up against the iron of the league, and they're they're more than holding their own. They're doing okay. Again, yeah, we talked about it. They had 292 yards rushing last week against Athol, 156 yards for Ian McClure. Bailey Young had 109. And yeah, those are big numbers. Right now we're looking at Ian McClure with six carries for 19 yards, but he's had a couple of big carries in those six carries. Bailey Young. 11 carries, 51 yards for him there in the first half. And Owen Bashaw attempted five pass attempts, uh, completed two of those, just 14 yards. But again, they've got some stuff going on on offense. Well, what I really like uh, about them defensively, too, Frontier has a well deserved reputation uh, of being those big, tough, mean dudes that like, you know, they like kind of like that street fight yeah. type of uh, vibe out there defensively. 
And really, seems to me that the Franklin Tech Eagles are giving them a taste of their own medicine. They really are, and again, they're they're uh, they're equally, if not almost, as quick as Frontier. We know Frontier's got some quicks, you know, coming out of that backfield. But yeah, those linebackers and linemen are doing a nice job chasing those guys down. They're not letting them get to the outside. Again, we saw Edo McMillan break two big long runs. Now one of them came back on a penalty, so they did give up the one big run. But other than that, uh, they've held pretty well. And again, eight-eight tie at halftime. Uh, that's got to favor Franklin Tech right now. I would say so. No question about that. We'll take a time out here on our Greenfield Savings Bank High School football halftime before more halftime from South Deerfield on Bear Country 95.3. All right, Dave, we'll take it. Um, let's see, there's one, two, three. Okay, we'll do a three minute break, which means we'll take it out of the South Deerfield Polish Club. Okay, we'll take it out of the South Deerfield Polish Club. Let me see here. That's a 30, that's a 30. Okay. Anything from Sacker yet? No, I just texted him and asked him anything back either. What if he's in a dead spot? Well, we, you were having. Um, that was an Athol. You were an Athol, yeah. yeah. Orange, he should, yeah, he should be okay there. My heart's usually all right. Yeah. yeah. Crocodile Rock. They're, they're doing it out Elton John at halftime here tonight. Elton John. It's all Elton John songs. It reminds me of the story about uh, one of my friends went to see him somewhere. And it he, he he took a leak. He, he's trying to find a good time to go take a leak. Yeah. And the men's room was really crowded at one time. And they're all in there. There's, it was when he was doing his, his songs from the Disney years. Uh, you know, he wasn't doing Crocodile Rock or Saturday, Saturday uh, It's All Right for Funny. It was all, you know, Can You Feel the Love Tonight and all, all the uh, Disney songs. Uh, Instead of like, yeah, we need to take a leak. This I would be a good go. time to take a leak. I went to see him down at the Mullen Center when he played there years ago. And we are back here. Halftime continues. Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. Jeff and Sean and Dave Reno. Big game locally would be uh, in the Tri-County League, and that's the Weir Indians coming uh, to Buckland, taking on the Mohawk Warriors, the call program with Turner's Falls. What's our latest update, Sean? Yep, we, that was it. we got the uh, scoreboard update at the end of the first quarter, and that was Weir leading 6 to nothing. TD run by Rakib Hanfeld, and then the extra point blocked by Ryan Duplos. And that was last we heard. Six zip was uh, Ware leading that one. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Of course, Greenfield Mahar, a big game as Greenfield tries to uh, come back after a very tough loss. I mean, they gave everything they had to knock out the Frontier team. Not quite able to do it. 
But Greenfield needs to stockpile some wins between now and the end of the uh, regular season here. Yeah, and they played Frontier really well the last few seasons. They beat them once. They lost a close one in the last year. And yeah, this year again. And again, if you're ever going to look back and say, we got robbed, that's kind of one of them games where you can kind of look at it and say, we got robbed. Again, Greenfield had a chance to win that thing at the end. So it's not like, uh, you know, it was completely taken away from them. But yeah, a couple bad calls in uh, Greenfield was uh, could have won that one. But yeah, they got three games left in their regular season. And uh, they absolutely have to win all three of those, including tonight at Mahar. And even with that, they still may be on the outside looking in the playoff picture here in the top four. And in terms of our Patriot update, we got the Patriots coming up. They're playing in the Monday night game against the Jets. They handled them easily uh, at Gillette earlier in the year as expected. The Jets, though, what a, what a difference getting Sam Darnold back. Uh, they, you know, the Jets just didn't have good quarterbacks while Darnold was out. However, now he's back. They're coming off a big win against Dallas. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, I mean, that guy's tough too. So it's uh, they've got some pieces, and the defense is pretty good. So uh, we'll see what the Patriots can figure out on offense this week. That's what Berman, their struggle has been here, obviously. Of course, you say that, and then they've been beating teams by 24. And you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's kind of, you can you pick nits, but pick a nits, uh, yeah. again, it'll be a close game, you think, and it should be a good game. And uh, Patriots are a little bit of a favorite there. And, but, yeah, Darnold's certainly making a difference uh, for the Jets. It'll be a fun game to watch, that's for sure. And we'll have it for you right here on Bear Country 95.3. Again, they have the Monday night game tonight. And uh, we'll have it, uh, uh, rather this weekend, we'll have it uh, Monday night pregame coverage beginning at 5.30. Live from uh, the Meadowlands in New Jersey. We'll take our final time out. We'll come back at you set for the start of the second half. 8-8 eight, eight time. Frontier and Franklin Tech back after these. Tomorrow we have another sign-up location at our fall $5,000 giveaway, and it's at Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. Lisa Albert and her crew will be there. They're celebrating 10 years in business at that location, and we'll be there broadcasting live from 11 to 1. Come get some free ice cream from Ice Cream Alley, the free popcorn. Drop your name in the sign-up box. Ten qualifiers when we're done at one. One of those qualifiers is going to win 50 bucks, but everyone's going into the grand prize drawing coming up later on in October. $3,000. Get all the details on the fall $5,000 giveaway. Brought to you by Tire Warehouse, Federal Street in Greenfield at bear953.com. All right, first quarter with 5.30 to play. Ido McMillan, a short touchdown run. Josh Samaski, the conversion run, 8 nothing Frontier. And then with 9.40, 8 left to play in the first half. Bailey Young from one yard out. Young tacked on the conversion run. And we are tied at 8. Franklin Tech will be receiving the second half kickoff here. And they have had uh, some good success in that first half against this tough Frontier D. We'll see if they can actually take a second half lead against Frontier here. Yeah, their first possession, they got it at the Frontier 40 yard line. They were unable to move the ball. And you thought, oh, well, all right, maybe this offense just isn't gonna be able to do much against the Hawks. But again, we're in an 8-8 tie right now. And the kick is a high kick, and it is caught. Skying forward and picking it up. The onside kick recovery is successful for Frontier. That thing was just hit a mile in the air, and it certainly went the Ian, 10 yards. Ian Spirits, a sophomore, and he's only about 5'7", but he skied much higher than that to grab that with about a yard and a half to spare. Again, it needs to go 10 yards, and it did. Perfectly executed. Franklin Tech not looking for that whatsoever. First and 10 Frontier on the Tech 48 yard line. Did not see that coming, but there it was. The ball ends up on the ground again. Picked up by the quarterback DeForest. He's dropped for a loss back to the 49 yard line. They were running uh, that counter play they like to do and just lost the football again. And that, yeah, I say not the first, you said again, but I say that's not the first time that has happened. And again, it's starting to get a little bit cold, but I mean, it's not wet. That football certainly not wet at all. And might be a little slick with the coldness, perhaps, but really it's getting a little ridiculous here. And the handoff this one time goes to Edo McMillan, and he gets driven back as soon as he got his mitts on the ball. He got driven back for no gain. Ball back at the 49-yard line of the Tech Eagles. It'll be third and 11. A Tech player is down injured. 
McMillan will lose a yard on that carry. So 49 yards for Ito on eight carries. And we'll check the injured Tech players right around where the ball got back to the line of scrimmage, kind of right through where Ito McMillan ran. And oh, I'm checking numbers down there. Looks like he's flat on his back. Looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. He's, uh, Legs are moving, arms are moving, talking to the coach, and coach is kind of rubbing up his chest there a little bit, and he might just got the wind knocked out of him. Both teams obviously uh, have taken a knee. The player is right between where the two huddles are. He's within uh, 10 feet of both teams, kind of lying right in the middle of the field. Coach. And again, trying to see who that might be. Looks there like he's go. getting ready to get up. 54. And, yep. 54 and that was Kyle Snyder. Snyder. And he's shaking his head yes, and uh, yeah, sounds like he just got a little shaken up there. He's going to come off the field, obviously, for this play, but kind of sprung right up and nodded to his teammates yes, and now he's jogging off the field with his coaches. So yep, that had good. all the, that had all the earmarks of getting your win knocked out of you. Yeah, you know, it takes about 45 seconds <laughs> or so. You know, it, it's an agonizing first 15 seconds. Yeah, you can yes. see the coach talking to him, and he's all them. All right, just breathe. Third down and 11 from the 49 yard line for Frontier. And it's a double handoff, goes to McMillan and Ito's got the first down inside at the 35 yard line of the Tech Eagles. And McMillan bails him out again. Yeah, again, you're right, you said 19 yards there. So 68 yards now real quick for Ito. And again, real quick is what Ito McMillan is. So big play there, him just to get the outside, make a couple guys miss. All the way down outside the 31 yard line now, of Franklin Tech. First down and 10 for the Hawks. 11 minutes to play here in the third quarter. We are tied at eight. DeForest, the pitch goes to McMillan. On the right side, another big gainer, lowers the shoulder. Ran right over a player, still going. He's down inside the 25, down to the 20 yard line, another Red Hawk first down. Yeah, what a tough run that one was there. Edo McMillan running at full speed, just puts his head down, he levels a linebacker, pops off of that. Almost still going at full speed, picks up another four or five yards after the contact, big first down all the way down to the 20 yard line. 5'8", 155, yeah. he's a wiry 155 as well. He's, he's strong but stronger than he looks, yeah. for sure. First down and 10 from the 20. They're gonna go to McMillan again, why not? Right side, McMillan still going, inside the 10, down to the five yard line. 15 yard gain there, first and goal for the Red Hawks, McMillan making it look easy. Bailey Young, very slow getting up. Yeah, it looked like he was in on the that. Tech Eagles, yeah. yeah. He, he was in on that tackle and uh, Looks like he's adjusting something down around his snap. Yeah, he'll get up now, I think. Just took a minute, a little shaken up, but he's fine. He's not even gonna come off the field. First down and goal for Frontier from the five. It's been all McMillan. This time they go to Kirkendall, the fullback. Moves the pile forward down to the two. Gain of three. Second and goal from there. First carry for Alec tonight. The junior, 5'8", 210. Usually once he gets a pile of guys moving in one direction, it keeps moving in that direction. Picked up a couple yards there. Gonna be second and goal. Yeah, look at the look at the thighs on Kirkendall yeah. com compared to uh, Edo McMillan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's very, very different. Very different built young men, no question. Second and goal from the three. Inside give, and is DeForest himself, did he get in? Yes, touchdown Garrett DeForest. And Frontier has reclaimed the lead, it is 14 to eight. Uh, and that was a nice block there by Kirkendall to seal that for DeForest to be able to just slide right in from a couple yards out, so yeah. The Red Hawks, 9.40 to play here in the third quarter. You can go for two. Oh, he fumbled it. And it is picked up, big scramble, and the two-point conversion is no good. Timeout on the field, 9.40 to play here in the third. And on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it's now Frontier 14, Franklin Tech 8 on Bear Clark 3, 95.3. 8, 6, 2, 3, Edo McMillan to kick off. Edo McMillan will kick off for Frontier from the 40. When they kicked off to begin the half, they hit a high pop fly 
That was taken down by Spirits on the onside kick. And they went right down the field on the legs of McMillan to score. And we'll see what they do this time. And they hit another pot fly. And it is taken by a fair catch. He did call for a fair catch, yeah. Yep. Dylan Demers took it there. Right around the 40-yard line. That was Ben Lazat. He came in and he thought he was going to make himself a tackle there. He had not seen the fair catch uh, wave and had him wrapped up, getting ready to rip him down. But then the whistles, he stopped. So nice job by him. And now Franklin Tech looking up at that scoreboard. Down 14-8 quickly here in the second half. They start this drive their own 41. First down and 10 for the Eagles, moving right to left. Now trailing by six. They have not led tonight. Owen Bashaw, the quarterback, under center. Pitch goes to McClure on the right side. Looks to turn the corner. Does so, but Frontier closes late. Josh Samaski on the stop. Samaski on the stop. DeForest was over there as well. Just a short game. It'll be second down. Well, a couple of scoreboard updates, and neither one of them particularly good game for the two, uh, local teams. Okay. What do you got? We have time? I was teasing it. Yeah. I was going to tease it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a tease? tease. You guys ready? You're That's game a tease, yeah. yeah. Where, well, where is up 14 to nothing over uh, uh, Mohawk? Okay. Second TD run by uh, Hadfield in uh, two-point pass made it 14 nothing. Halftime, we're over Mohawk in after this play. And off goes to McClure. And he will try the left side. I'll check that. That was Bowden Smith, the fullback, Dominic and he brings Smith it to the 45-yard line. The It'll be third down and about six third from there. Six and the at Mahar, Greenfield is down 14 to nothing to the Senators, and Gary Sack tells me Jake Sack is out with a twisted ankle, so their quarterback is now out for Greenfield Ooh, High School, and they are man. down by 14 at Mahar. Injuries Not really good. racking up. Yeah for the Greenway. That's disappointing to hear. Yep. They had more than their share. Bailey Young has the first down. Left side still going into Frontier Territory. Down to the Red Hawk 38 yard line. I busted big on the left and they'll move the sticks. Yeah, gain of 23 there for Young. So 74 yards for him. Franklin Tech looking to answer that early second half score by the Hawks. Again, 14-8 right now Hawks, but Franklin Tech moving again. 7-8-4. 8-6-2-3. And the ball just inside the 40-yard line, or call it the 37, 38-yard line. First down and 10. Back to in the eye formation. Rashad, play action, rolling to the right. Deep ball, right side, That's looking for Melu. Incomplete down at the 10-yard line, second down. Looked like he had some space out there, and Bashaw just, four. again, just slightly Franklin overthrew ten. that one. Trying to hit his big tight end, Melu. Bashaw, th uh, two of six passing in this game. 14 yards on those two completions for him. So back to the 38 yard line. Second down and 10. 14 8 Frontier after McMillan's, after uh, the DeForest score, I should say. The natives are getting restless down there. Yeah. A good crowd tonight. Halfback option to throw it out the right flag, and that is caught by Young for a first down. Nice oh, play call. Oh, and that should be a penalty. And that'll be a late hit out of bounds, so a nice gain of about uh, 15 yards. They're going to tack on yardage beyond that. They're going to tack on 15 more. That was a late hit out of bounds, and a good play there at Gainer and first down, and then tack on a 15-yard penalty. So Frontier now, 40 yards, four penalties, two of them 15-yarders. The pitch went to Hunter Wozniak, and he completed the pass. And then the recipient of that pass got knocked out of bounds, a 15-yarder, and that's going to bring the ball down close to the 10-yard line. We'll call it the 11-yard line. First and 10 from there. Backs in the I formation. Handoff goes to Bailey Young on the left side. And he gets spun down at the 10-yard line. Good job there by Logan to kind of spin him back towards the inside. Also helping out 79, okay, Hunter Wolfson. Next number, seven, yep. eight, Young tried four, to get to the nine, outside one, and three, oh. just seven, couldn't eight, do it, four, so ends up trying nine, to cut it back one, in. Three, oh. Claim your prize here he gained box. about a yard on the play. 
hard earned yard there. Second and nine from the 10 yard line. Inside of seven minutes to play here in the third. Frontier leads by six, 14-8. And they go back to the I formation. Bailey Young on the right Bailey side. Right Got stood up immediately by Donovan. Just drove him right back. Donovan Hoffman for no gain. So now it's going to bring up a third down for Franklin Tech. Yeah, I can actually maybe uh, lose him. Lose bring a yard it back there. to the 11 yard line. Yeah, yeah. it'll be third, third, third and 11. Again, 50 50 number. 7, 8, 4, 9, 1, 3, see what Joe Gamash 7, comes up 8, with here. 4, 9, 1, 3, 0. Third down and 11. They're going to go shotgun this time. Bashaw has Young to his left. He's back to pass, looking to the left side. Sails Jackson, over the head of the intended recipient of the pass, Colby Melo. And now we've gone to fourth down. Yeah, Bashaw has thrown five incomplete passes, and I know at least three of those that were. He was looking for the big tight end, Melu, and. On all three occasions, he's just overthrown the ball. That one there, Melu just never had a shot at. So fourth down now. They can get a first down inside the two yard line. All right, they will come up to the line of scrimmage. Again, shotgun formation. The shot looks over the D. Wide outs to either side. Coming motion as well as that. He is back to pass. Heavy rush, they throw downfield and it's caught. And Stretching towards the goal Got line. Got the first down, I think. I don't think he's in, but that should be the first Pass down. To number 54, Kyle Snyder. So that was Kyle Snyder, who has a lineman eligible. And let's we'll see, see where, they, where they marked that ball. It looks down. like it's just outside the one. And well, was he eligible? Oh, what are we talking about that? The official was he? Uh, yeah, the front. The fr yeah, he's a lineman, and he would have had to have been an el eligible receiver. Yeah, he may have right. ended up going downfield and catching a pass that he was not eligible to catch. They're pointing, and I'm not sure if that's what they're talking about or not. But that certainly makes sense if he didn't check in as an eligible receiver. And that's yeah, it. he's there, a lineman. Yeah. The flag, yeah, that's oh. the flag. Yeah. So we're going to wipe that play back and... Uh, well, I saw a 54, I saw a 54 catch and I thought, wait a minute. Yeah, it's not normal. That's, you know, 84 would be a normal receiver's number, not 54. And Joe Gamash is coming out to get the explanation. Yeah, Kyle Snyder ended up catching it. Somehow found he himself open. He was wide open. Because he wasn't being guarded. He made a nice wasn't a receiver. catch and, uh, yeah. And he, ball came down and he caught it. Almost, uh, almost got in the end zone with it too, but... Well, I was been, I've been interested to see if that would have been a first down or not, because that was going to be close, but that point is moot now after the penalty. Well, let's Joe. Well, they're, still, they're, 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 still, they're still talking about it. Yep. Well, if he didn't get the first down, he declined the penalty. Frontier gets the ball back at the one, unless they want to take the penalty. Give him one more crack. It'll be fourth and uh, about 26, though, if it's a 15-yarder. That's not a 15-yarder, though. Would that, no. be, uh, be a, would that be a five-yard penalty or a 10? I think it's a fiver. I'm not sure. Ineligible receiver. Not sure what they would. Uh, then, no, it's what they're talking about right now. Joe Gamash seems satisfied. Yeah, ineligible. Yeah. Ineligible receiver downfield. Loss of down. Yeah. Oh, and it's a loss of down. Yep. There you go. Okay, so that's what they were untangling. So, so now, for, yeah, so right here will take over. Yeah. Okay. After they march this off, they will take over. First down and ten, leading by a score of 14-8 with 5:42 to play here in the third quarter. That's not a call we see here very often in high school football. No, we do not. The, uh, and you would think lineman. that we would, actually. Once in a while. A lineman just finding himself in an area of the field that he's not supposed to be, but to their credit, we really don't see that very often at all. No. All right, so first and 10 now for Frontier. Ball around their own 15-yard line. The NF goes to Josh Samaski. No, this is Garrett DeForest. Oh, and they ripped the ball out. That ball came out. That could be Tech ball. And Tech says they have it. The officials say what? Oh, one guy pointed one way. The other guy pointed the other way. Wait, but these officials have to come together. Tech is certain that yeah, they got the football. It looked like they, they did. I thought they did, honestly. And nope. No, nope. Frontier's uh. going to keep it. Tech, the Tech players are coming to the bench saying, we got Game it. Five, we got it, coach. Five. That ball came out. There was not much doubt about that. 
Second week in a row. Now, we don't know how blatant that was. I did not get a good look at it. Last week, I got a very good look at that fumble on Frontier. That well, I thought I got a pretty good look at that one, and I thought that was going to be a turnover. Now, Tech will take a timeout. Yeah, and we'll take the break as well. 4.57 to play third quarter on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 14, Franklin Tech 8. Well, Frontier maintains possession on their own 22-yard line on that disputed play. And as you mentioned, Sean, you had 11 kids in Franklin Tech uniforms jumping and pointing, saying, we got it. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that says a lot. There's a natural reaction, you know, and again, those kids have been playing ball. They know, they're, they know what they're looking for, looking at. And yeah, you know, again, all 11 of those guys. And you saw the, the ball pop out, but that'll just give Joe Gamash to, uh, something to talk to Mike Kaczewski about. Similar uh, circumstances last week. Second down and six. And another Garrett busted play. Garrett DeForest ends up going down for a loss back near the 20 yard line. Yeah, he's lost quite a few yards tonight on plays just like that. He lost about 10 yards just scooping up those uh, missed exchanges and losing a yard or two. Gonna bring up a third down, third and longer now, about six. Third down and uh, about seven. Ball, ba seven. ball back near the 20 yard line. Well, they're going the wrong way. You're going to Samaski. He's brought down. Samaski got smacked immediately. Huge hit there. It's going to be fourth down and long. He's going to lose a yard on that carry. Although we have a flag down. That's not a leaf. <laughs> Nine yards for Samaski on five carries. Yeah, he's had a tough time getting on the backfield. This one's going to go against the Hawks, so it'll be declined by Tech. And the Hawks will have to punt away here on fourth and long. Eagles will take the result of the play, which will be, uh, again, a loss by DeForest and uh, by Samaski, rather. So ball now back at the 18-yard line, fourth down and long. Let's see where Bailey Young ends up setting up here. He's the deep man for Franklin Tech, and he's going to field this ball well inside the 50-yard line. He's going to set up at the old, at the uh, Frontier 40. And here comes the punt. Much better punt this time. They're taking it from the 48. Bailey Young on the right side, 45-40. Lowers the shoulder down to the 38-yard line. First down and 10 for the Eagles from there. Well, they came close to scoring on their Eddie last drive. The they get the ball back. They've been moving it mostly on the ground. First they had that tech. one halfback option Second pass. From the frontier. Yeah, 38 yard line, yard first line. down and 10. Well, you've got to be impressed with the way Franklin Tech has come in here tonight. Win, lose, or draw. Again, down 14 8 right now. Four minutes to play, third quarter. But a short field here for them inside the 40 yard line to start this drive. Bashad brings him up. First down and 10. It goes to Bailey Young up the Bailey middle. Young on the carry. Maybe a yard the or so to the 37. He's second down and long. Bailey's having himself a pretty good night. 76 yards. 14 carries for the, the senior. Gain of a yard. Second and nine. Clock in motion. 3.33 to play here. Third quarter. Only one score here in the second half, and that was DeForest's three-yard run. The conversion run failed. Second down and long. It goes to McClure on the right side. Bounces to the outside. Tripped up by Donovan Hoffman, though, before he could get to the first down marker. Did bring the ball, though. Well, let's see, we're gonna mark him down. Right around the 35-yard line. Caught third down and six. Hoffman with five catches last week and played himself a whale of a defensive game too against Greenfield. He was our player of the game last week. Another tackle there for him. Third down and seven for the Tech Eagles. Third and seven for the Eagles. From the Frontier 35 yard line. Pitch, left side goes to Bailey Young. Finds Bailey a seam, short of the first Bailey down. Bailey Got it stop. down to about the 32. Well, it'll be close, yeah. Yeah, I think he's a little bit short. Well, you know they're going to go here. Call it fourth and about three yards. Yeah, he needs to get to about the 29, 28, 29 yard line. He's around the 32. Certainly four down territory here, especially trailing by a score. Yep, two minutes to play here, 2.15 to play here in the third quarter. I think Young would be a good bet here, even though everybody would be thinking the same thing. There's the snap. 
And they are going to go. Nope, not going to work. It's going to Ian McClure. And he got driven back. Great surge defensively. Donovan Hoffman, among others. Also, Jake Dodge was in there. They're going the other way. Yeah, big defensive. Stop right there. They're going to drive him back. He's going to lose three or four yards on the play. So the Red Hawks needed that stop there. Up 14 to 8. Just under two minutes to play here, third quarter. Big defensive play there. 39 yard line, first down and 10 for Frontier with 1.55 to play here in the third. They lead 14 8. And they're going to look now to go up by two scores here. And this play uh, is whistled play. dead. There was a whistle, and I think it was the start whistle, but Outside then it, on it, it, it Franklin prompted Tech. Franklin Tech to kind of come up out of their stance there. A couple of guys moved, and yeah. it'll be a yeah, five-yard. I, I heard that whistle, too. I thought it was, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sean. I thought it was the, the start whistle. Like, you know, they blow the whistle, like, okay, we had, a cha we had a change of possession. Now we're ready. The ball is set. Now we can play. Yeah, it seems simultaneous to the uh, Franklin Tech kids that moved right at that point. First down and five from the 44-yard line. DeForest loses the football. McMillan picks it up, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. Unbelievable how many times the ball has come loose for Frontier tonight. Yeah, you, you really don't see that out of this team very often at all, and particularly this year. I mean, they've been running that offense so crisply, almost impossible to stop at some points, and now they're just kind of stopping themselves here on some of these plays. Don't see that. You don't see them do that very often. Ball back to the 41-yard line. Second down and about seven or eight. And half goes to Samaski on the counter play. He kind of leans forward up to the 44-yard line. Still well shy of a first down. It's going to be third down and about six from there. I kind of wonder if there isn't something wrong with Garrett DeForest's hand or... Maybe you know a wrist or an elbow or a shoulder or something. That's just uh, not normal for him to not be able to handle those snaps. And again, they did start with a different quarterback. They were going to run him out of the backfield. But that didn't go very well. They tried two different quarterbacks there in the in the very beginning of the game and tried to run DeForest out of the backfield instead of the quarterback spot. They quickly had to find him back there to run it properly, but having a hard time with these snaps all night long. Third and five from the 44-yard line. They're going to go shotgun, direct snap. And it's going to go to the four short of the first down, however. He brought the ball to the 47, needs to get to the 49. It's going to be fourth and about a yard and a half. Oh, I think you got to punt that away, but we may not see that until the start of the fourth quarter. 13 seconds, clock rolling. and Yeah, I, I, would, play, I, would, try, I would try to flip the field here. I don't think the Hawks are going to get this play off. They're just going to let that clock run down, and then they can talk about it. All right, end of three here in South Deerfield, and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, the Frontier Red Hawks 14, Franklin Tech Eagles 8, fourth quarter action coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Will Frontier punt here on fourth and about two? It's really a long one or a short two. The ball's at the 48. And the first down marker is closer to the midfield strike. To start the fourth quarter. All right, here we go. Fourth down and short. And they are going to run a play here, evidently. Snap goes to DeForest. Inside give. They got the first down. Fullback Kirkendall. And Kirkendall has the first down. Yep, tough to stop. Again, low center of gravity, strong kid. 5'9", 2'10", and he just got that pile moving. Going to pick up a couple three yards, just needed one. So big play call there for Frontier and a big execution of a first down. They got it to the Tech 48-yard line. The drive continues. Fourth quarter underway now. Frontier clinging to a six-point lead, 14-8. And the pitch this time. He's going to go to Simaski. And he Jack gets spun Simaski down at the 46-yard line after a gain of about two. It'll be second down and eight. Yeah, he's found it tough running tonight. Josh Simaski, just a sophomore, 5'11", 180. Seven carries, just 13 yards for him tonight. So Franklin Tech doing a nice job defending Simaski coming out of the backfield. McMillan has had a big yardage per carry effort so far. He's not going to get it this time either. They go back to Samaski. 
And Josh brings oh, it inside the 45. Yeah, his helmet did come off. You're right. After a gain of a couple, it'll be third down at about five. <coughs> Samaski's going to have to come off. Looks like that helmet needs a little bit of love. Mouthpiece is still in his mouth, but helmet not on his head. That'll get Dodge back into the game now. So we'll line up at the right halfback, the right slot back formation. DeForest gets the play call from head coach Don Gordon. Clock in motion, 10. The clock is out, I should say. 10.51 to play here. Now they restart it. 14-8 Frontier, a tight one here on Bear Country. Yeah, and again, a big play here on third down. Ball's at the 43 of Tech. They need to get to the 38 to keep it going. Back to pass, and it's a design run by DeForest, and DeForest has the first down inside the 40-yard line, down to around the 37, first and 10 Red Hawks. Yeah, that'll erase a lot of the yards he's lost on those plays where the bad snaps he had to cover up, lost a couple yards, a couple, three yards, did that a bunch of times here tonight. Not been able to get outside that pocket. DeForest, seven carries, no yards, but more importantly, it's a first and 10 for the Red Hawks right there. 37 yard line of Franklin County Tech. DeForest takes the snap. Inside give and a flag comes down. It went to the fullback Kirkendall, but we'll have to see about that flag. Officials are talking about it and what do we got? I did not see it, I'm not sure. Personal foul on Personal Franklin foul. County Tech. That's Franklin a big Tech. penalty. That's not helping your cause. No, it is not. They've had a pretty good game defensively. This high-powered frontier offense has only scored twice, but now the ball is going to end up inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, seven penalties, 65 yards against Tech tonight. All the way down to about the 23. We've had personal fouls on both sides called tonight. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough one right there. Ball just outside the 20 yard line now. First and 10 for the Hawks. Looks like it's uh, about the 23 or so. First down and 10 after that big 15 yard penalty. Garrett DeForest calling the signals. He's gonna take it himself on the right side. Garrett DeForest on the carry. And a gain inside the 20 yard line. We'll see what they actually Spot him down, probably around the 18-yard line or so. Yeah, get him about four, it looks like, on that. Yep. Second down coming up. Clock continues to go down. Not really a factor yet here in the fourth quarter. It's 9.30 to play. Plenty of time. Now, that'll just be a factor if the Hawks do score here. Again, they're up by six, so another touchdown makes it 12, plus the pending extra point. So a two-score game for the Hawks, and the clock will become a factor soon for Tech. On second down, they go to McMillan for the first time in a while. Bounces to the outside, turns the corner, yeah, the run out of bounds game. down near the 10. Looks like he's out before the first down marker, but he's close. Yeah, close to 100 yards as well. I've got him right around 99 yards right now. He's going to be, be a couple two yards two shy of the first down. Yeah, he needed to get to about the 12 for the first down, and he's right around the 13 yard line. From the tech 13 yard line. Had exactly 101 yards last week against Greenfield, 20 carries, 101 for Ito. Sitting at 100 yards right now, so good, 99 yards right now. And that's gonna be a five yarder against the Tech. Yep, so that'll be a first down the easy way for Frontier. That'll step him off five yards from the 23 down to the 18. And a first down. Well, again, the kind of mistakes that you can't make to win a game like this if you're Franklin Tech. They're starting to make them now. You know, that 15-yarder and now a five-yarder here, and they're just kind of handing first downs out here inside the 30-yard line. Seven-yard line. First down and goal. They go right up the middle. And the fullback brings it to around the five. That looked like a Kirkendall run, didn't it? Just yeah, kind of 25, yeah. The way the bodies all end up just kind of in a mass and keep pushing forward. Give them a yard or two second there. Took it down to the five yard line. Second and goal from there. Coming down to the eight and a half minute mark here of the football game. McMillan had a rushing touchdown in the first second half. Garrett DeForest also ran for a touchdown. Those are the two 
Frontier Red Hawk scores. Bailey Young has the lone Franklin Tech score and he also ran in the two point conversion to tie the game at that time. Now Tech is just trying to hang on here. Fumble. Ball is picked up by McMillan, but he's gonna get driven all the way back outside the 10 yard line as that play just was a mess, Sean. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought Franklin Tech was gonna get the ball, it was out. McMillan ended up covering it up. DeForest ended up with the football there. It was Ito at the end, but either way, it was Ito was, at yeah, the end, yeah. he ended up scooping it up and then he lost a couple more line. yards. So yeah, this one pushed outside the 10 to the 11. Third down now, third and goal from the 11 for the Hawks. Third and goal from the 11 yard line and Frontier's gonna call a timeout. We'll step aside as well. 7.49 to play in this one. Frontier 14, Franklin Tech 8 on the conquest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. Third down and goal for Frontier now. Ball's on the Franklin Tech 11 yard line after that busted play and the big loss. So two shots to get it in here for the Hawks. They lead by six, 14-8. That's the same score in orange between Mahar and Greenfield. The Senators with the lead. DeForest rolling to the left. Throwing, left corner of the end zone, McMillan got him! Got him at the one, I think he got pushed out at the one. One yard line, it'll be... McMillan. Yeah, McMillan makes the catch, but did not get in. Inside four, uh, four for five is Garrett DeForest, 37 yards. Fourth and goal now from Fourth the one. Yeah, right down to the one, you can see Ito trying to just turn in at the corner, he got pushed out. Good call there by the official. So big, big, big play right here for the Red Hawks. Again, 14-8, they're up. 7.40 to play in the game. Franklin Tech now settling in defensively. Who do they go to here? Kirkendall, Kirkendall the fullback. Kirkendall. And he is, we're waiting, we're oh, waiting. I don't think he got in. Oh, he did. Here's the Finally, touchdown. they waited forever to make the indication, but Alec did make it into the end zone for the touchdown. 20-8, Frontier. Tough to stop that again, Alec Kirkendall. He's a junior, 5'9", goes about 210, but boy is that kid strong from a yard out. He was able to just pull through the line. Again, late call, but they waited to make sure he got in, and they say that he did. 20 to eight now, Frontier, they're gonna go for two here. And it's gonna be DeForest. He'll try it himself, and did Garrett make it? Again, another delayed call, no, he did not get in. That could be key as we come down the stretch. We'll take a timeout. 7.31 to play in the football game, and on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it's now Frontier 20, Franklin Tech 8 on Bear Country, 95.3. Alec Kirkendall's touchdown makes it 20 to eight, but it's still within range for Franklin County Tech as they trail only by 12 here. And they have shown the ability to move the ball. They've hurt themselves though by penalties lately. Yeah, not a quick strike offense. They're gonna need two scores. And they kick another pop up. And the Franklin Tech player, I thought he had called for a fair catch and then he went to run. So I think they're going to spot him actually back at around the 35 yard line or so. I think that's a flag if you do that, if you signal for a fair catch and then actually catch it and run. So I thought I saw that signal too, but he did, He kind of put his head down and ran forward a little bit. But either way. And the ball is going to be right at the 35 yard line for Franklin County Tech moving left to right here in the fourth. So they yeah. trail by 12 with 7.30 to play in our first. You know, it was very breezy yesterday, obviously, in the remnants of the storm that came through. Didn't feel the wind until just now. Yeah, air is changing. You can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first night where we actually really feel the cold, Chan. Yeah. On first down, it's Bailey Young. Cuts to the outside. Bailey across the 40. Hit late, that's, that's gonna be a 15 flag. yarder. Yeah. yeah, got hit well out of bounds. So the play itself brought it to the 40, but add 15 yards from there, that, that should bring it to the frontier territory. That's gotta be maddening for a head coach. Again, the kid's well out of bounds. I mean, he got a few yards on the carry, but then you give him 15 on top. You're only up by two scores right now, 723 to play. That's just a bad place to make that penalty right there. Let's see where they're going to step it off from. 
Okay, the ball is going to be brought all the way down to the Frontier 43-yard line. And another flag just came out. I'm guessing that's going to come off the bench. It is. Oh, yeah, they pointed right at the... That's going to be a 15-yarder against frontier, the coach. At Frontier's coach. Well, now you just compounded that mistake. Wow. That's 30 yards you just handed over. Yeah, the official is going over and said, look, I've, I've heard enough. It wasn't a bad call. I mean, he was clearly out of bounds, and, uh, you know... It wasn't a terrible hit, but he didn't need to hit the kid. He was well out of bounds, so that was worth the flag. And then a 15-yarder on the coach, so 30 yards right there on top of eight yards by Bailey Young on his run. Down to the 28-yard line of Frontier. That, that, that's the biggest gift Franklin Tech could have gotten. Now Bailey Young, but he's caught behind the line of scrimmage, ripped down by Garrett DeForest. DeForest came through untouched and brings him down for a big loss, and the momentum that Tech, that Tech got with that run and double 15-yard penalties, now it's slowed. Yeah, Bailey Young was approaching 100 yards on the ground, but he's gonna lose about five there. So he's got 83 yards now on 19 carries. Ball back outside the 30, down to the, uh, outside the 33-yard line. Young's gonna come off the field. He's actually holding the back of his right with the hamstring. They're gonna stretch him. Second down and 15. Second 15. Not too many leg cramps on a cold night like tonight, but looks like that's what's happening to Bailey right now. Yep, Demers has replaced him in the lineup. They're going to go to McClure, Ian, over right tackle. Bailey Young in a carry. And McClure, the ball popped loose, but they're going to say he was down. It was picked up by Melo anyway. And a short gain from the 33 down to the 31. Josh Samaski got a stop. And it'll be third and 13 Lincoln from Porter, there. Yep, so 22 yards now on Lincoln nine carries for... Box. McClure. Clock in motion, 6-10 to play in the football game. It is 20-8 in favor of Frontier. After that, Alec Kirkendall, touchdown run of one yard. They go to the pistol formation. Pump fake, throws downfield, incomplete. Looking for a flag, but. No, well, he's not going to get it though. The intended receiver down there Number 20, Dante Rosewarn is not going to get the flag, and it'll be fourth down now. So again, a nice run by Young, double 15-yard penalties. They march it up 38 yards. They're inside the 25-yard line. Handed a gift. Handed a gift and not able to take advantage. Not at all. We do have an update from Buckland when we get this play over. All right, fourth down and 13. LaCour back to... Black for Bashaw. He'll roll to the right. Steps up. Throws downfield. Got him. Pass. Oh, he did not catch it. Did not catch it. It would have been short of the first down anyway, as I'm eyeing it here. And that flag comes in at the very end. I don't know. I think that's going to go and against Franklin Tech. Logic would say that's probably going to go against the Tech Eagles yeah. there. It looked like he had made the catch, but honestly, I think the ball hit the turf as he was coming up uh, on his way down. And well, it was inconsequential. He was short of the first down yeah, anyway. Yeah, would have turned it over either way, and now it's going to Tech on Un 15. Yeah, that's unsportsmanlike conduct here. That's going to go against Franklin Tech, presumably against one of the their players. Nine penalties, 85 yards against Franklin Tech. Yeah, almost the length of a football field. Yeah. So what, what was that update from uh, Pollard Field? Yeah, so it looks like there was a uh, touchdown run by where's Dylan Slattery, two-point pass from Slattery to Keith Smith that made it 22 nothing, and then uh, Jaden Whiting did catch a uh, uh, pass from Sean Davenport, and uh, Matthew Pollard caught a two-point conversion, so it's going to be 22-8 right now, end of three, where leads uh, Mohawk up in Buckland. Okay. We will keep uh, an eye on that for oh, you. And the Senators have just scored as well. 21-8 Mahar now. And a timeout on the field here. We'll take the break. 5.43 to play in the football game. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it is Frontier 20 and Franklin Tech 8. Ooh, that looked awkward. <coughs> Back on by 52, Yeah, that looked awkward. On first down from the 46-yard line, Eden McMillan takes the pitch, and he gains up to around the 50, but went down awkwardly, and he comes off the field. Looks like he's favoring his left knee or left ankle. It looked like it was kind of hyperextended, and then he kind of got bent back a little bit, and... Yeah, it looked a little awkward. He came gingerly off the field. Now he's just kind of standing prone. On second down and short. 
They are going to go to, I believe that's Samaski. Yeah, that was Josh. Short gain to the 49 of Tech. Third down, for Third down now. Clock definitely a factor now. 4.43 to play in the football game. Frontier leads by 12, 20 to 8. Tech obviously needs to stop here. He really can't give up any first downs here. Third down at five. Kirkendall, the fullback, has the first down and a flag. So we will see. Result of the play, well, he got right near the stick. Flag on the play. And what do we got? That'd be close to the first down. That was third and five. It's gonna be close, but we'll check that flag first. Another 15-yard penalty against the Red Hawks. Against Frontier. The good news for the Hawks, McMillan is okay. As he is uh, jogged back onto the field, he'll be ready to go, but this penalty is going to erase, uh, if not a first down carry, it, it would have been very close. For, it would have been fourth down and very close. Yeah. Not Instead, the ball now goes back to the Frontier 40. Third down and 15. Seven penalties for 85 yards against the Hawks. Nine penalties for 85 yards against Franklin Tech tonight. A lot of laundry mixed in with those leaves down there on the field. Third down and long, third and 15. McMillan comes in motion, rolling to the right. Oh. Floats the pass out there, looking for Donovan Hoffman, poked away by Bailey Young. Nice defensive play there, it'll be fourth down. Good play on both sides, really, yeah. A lot of pressure on DeForest, and then good timing on the back end as the pass was coming into the big tight end. They were able to knock that away. And since it's an incomplete pass, that stopped the clock with 3.58 to play. So all good there for the Eagles. Look at the ball back here. But when they do, they're going to have to score very quickly. Yep. What they would love is... Bailey Young's the D-man. They would love to have him take it to the house right here. Well, he could do it. Snap goes back. Here they come. Oh. Almost yeah, blocked. A poor punt, punt goes out of bounds up and around the 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Franklin Tech Bear. So Brown. that is, Sean, get this. This is a, that's a fifth. We've had a 19-yard punt. We've had a 15-yard punt. He was lucky to get that punt to go forward because there were three guys coming in and that thing just got out of there. That almost was blocked. If they'd taken that and run it in, that's exactly what they would have needed, but. However, yeah. only 3.53 left to play in the football game. And Tech trails by 12, it's 20 to eight. They've scored once, that was back in the second quarter, Bailey Young. They need to score quickly here. From the 45, first down and 10. Bashaw looks towards his bench. Coming in motion is Wozniak. He's back to pass with time. Throws a deep ball left side. Hit. And it's intercepted. Oh, did he drop it? Did he, did he drop it? No. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. He had it. Yeah, front, uh, Frontier's offense started coming out onto the field. Yeah, it was in his bread basket. And as he came down, must have just hit and the ball popped out. You can see that from here. So crisis averted there for Franklin Tech. Again, down by 12 points, 342 to play. Sam Hebert on coverage there for Frontier. It'll be second down in 10, 342 to play. Called his name a couple times tonight, Sam Hebert. And out of the pistol formation, the Shaw. Shuffle over to Bailey Young. Has some room. Left side gets a block. Has the first down in the frontier territory. Bailey Young, Bailey and he is down the close to the frontier 40 yard line. Down. And a frontier player for an injured, injured on the uh, far side, but now getting up. That and that's Jakey. Jake Dodge. And he's holding his belly, so it looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. Either that or he's hungry. Maybe hungry. He's going to hold his belly there. Don't make me laugh when I have a cold. <laughs> No, it's definitely, uh, he must have taken a shot right there. Something to the red basket, yeah. Yeah, yep. he's coming off of his own power. Nice to see Jakey out on the football field. Yeah, of course, he goes to Turner's Falls. Uh, he's a former player for Turner's Falls High School, along with his uh, older brother, who was the, uh, for at least now, anyway, the, the final starting quarterback yep. for Turner's Falls football. Kyle Dodge, good trivia question right there. Yeah, who was the final starting quarterback? Kyle Dodge. Bailey Young and a carry. 
And the handoff goes into the center of the line, and that is Bailey Young inside the 40-yard line. They, they need to move quicker here, Sean. 323. Yep. They need a little bit more pace. Yeah. They need to get the play call and get going. Or start using some timeouts. Tick-tock, 315 clock still rolling. And, they, and they're down by 12 points. Yeah. Got a lot of timeouts. So you still have four here. They need to score and convert on a... Onside kick, but they're six. wasting too much time between plays. He'll roll to the right, throwing out a deep ball, looking, and it goes out of bounds, and the intended receiver down there against con saying there's contact, but that ball was not catchable. No. Well no. out of bounds. Well overthrown and well out of bounds. Yep, three of uh, three of 12 passing is Owen Bashan. Boy, when he misses, that's what, how he misses. He misses long and he misses strong over the receiver. He hasn't missed anything short tonight. And Dante Rosemore, the intended receiver. So third down and six now. And the ball's gonna be placed down 38 yard line of Frontier. 2.58 to play, clock is out after that incomplete pass. And here come the Eagles. And they're going to work a double reverse. Ends up in the hands of Dante Warsworn. He's going to take it on the left side. Rosewarn. What happened? And did he get stripped? Point. Did he get stripped of the football? He was running towards the first he did. down. And he all got of stripped sudden, of the ball, and Frontier came up with it. And Logan was running the other way with it all of a sudden. He must have just ripped it right out of there. He was, Rosewarn was bearing down on a first down, but got stripped of the ball. And Frontier will take over on their own 40-yard line. Yeah, he never really got tackled, so he was just stood up. And yeah, the ball just must have been ripped out of there. We couldn't see it, but Andrew Logan came out with the football going the other way. No whistles, no flags. Frontier football at their own 40. Leading by a score of 20 to 8 with 2.45 to play. Give it to the fullback, Kirkendall. And he takes it from the 40 to the 42, a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Clock in motion, 233 to play. Yeah, I don't know if Alec Kirkendall has ever fumbled the football. Do you remember Alec Kirkendall ever putting it on the ground? I really don't think so. No. On, a, on a night when the ball's been on the ground a lot, yeah. he has not been one of the culprits. I don't think through his career, I don't think I've seen him put the ball on the ground very often. You've jinxed a few guys saying that. Though. I have. I have, and I don't expect it to happen this time. But you, you know, I remember you jinxed. <laughs> it was immediate. That too. was Quinn Doyle. I oh, know the mighty Quinn. I said the same. And thing. And you said the same thing about him. Yeah. And on the, I think on the <laughs> next play, every next play, <laughs> you fumbled. I took that one. That was my fault. Felt so bad for Quinn. <laughs> they go to Edo McMillan. McMillan. No gain. Maybe a loss of one. Ooh, almost a late <laughs> hit. Franklin the Tech. They got a. They got kind of a late lick in there, but no flag call. A loss of one back to the 41. The Tech not using their timeouts to yeah. stop the clock here, so minute 37 clock still rolling. And the Red Hawks are going to take all the time that they need right, yep. down, to the, right down to the end and before they have to run this play. Now, if Franklin Tech gets it back, they're going to have virtually no time left on the clock. And in need of two touchdowns. So, yeah, 20 to 8 right now. This is, for all intents and purposes, this one is over. I hate to start saying it right now, but I got to tell you, this Franklin Tech team impressed me tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a loss, but it, boy. McMillan. Nope, that's so Samaski. The ball popped loose. They're going to say he was down. Those Tech kids still scrapping out there, though. So they will stop the clock with 58 seconds left. And uh, they did call a timeout at Franklin County Tech. And we'll take a quick 30 second break. And we're back after this on Bear Country 95.3. Well, Frontier set to kick the ball away. That's the best punt of the night right there for Frontier. Went right by Bailey Young all the way down to the five yard line. Bailey across the 10, 15, 20, and then run out of bounds right around there. 45 seconds left to play. So. One more shot here for Tech to get into the end zone. They have one score that came uh, with Bailey Young's touchdown run in the second quarter. And he added the conversion run. That was it. But Shaw has clearly a strong enough arm to get the ball down the field. He just, uh, when he's missed tonight, he's just overthrown. And even his big tight end, Colby Malu, 6'3, went at him a few times and overthrew him every time. So 
Hasn't had a lot of success with the accuracy, but the kid's got the arm. He can fling it down there. Let's see what they do with 45 seconds to go. Ball around the 23-yard line of Franklin County Tech. Frontier 20, Tech 8. Shotgun formation. They go shotgun the rest of the way. Back to pass Bashaw. Throws over the middle. And the pass is incomplete. He was looking to hook up with Lucas Upland. But Donovan Hoffman said no, yeah, no. Yeah, I was going to say that would have been a completion, but Hoffman just separated him from the ball. And we have a scoreboard update for Mohawk, and now it's that Headfield kid again for Ware, 28-8. And Very then, similar score to what's happening in Orange. So those games have kind of been parallel, very, paralleling very much each so, other. Very yeah. much so. Well, now uh, Mo uh, Mohawk did just score, so 28-16 now. Davenport to Whiting again. So 28-16 where that's got to be 8.30 to go there in the game. Tell you what would be a good game, Sean. Snap goes back to Basha. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling to the right. Let's it fly. Underthrown. Underthrown and it'll be third down in 10. If Greenfield could get healthy, Greenfield Mohawk. That would be a good game. And that, in, in yeah, essence, would be a chance for Turner's kids to play against Greenfield. <laughs> One maybe, more time. Maybe they'll catch the uh, the consolation round. Maybe yeah. they'll end up not, uh, not non qualifier. Yeah, maybe yeah. They, they could match them up. And you're right, that would probably be a pretty good ball game. Greenfield, though, uh, I, I'm not sure that'd be such a good ball game right now. Greenfield, yeah. uh, they're just not healthy at all. No. I mean, all, uh, many of their key guys aren't even playing right now. Yeah, no, they're beat up and so uh, perhaps not. But if they can get healthy by November, who knows? Yeah, I was thinking that maybe Mohawk could play Frontier uh, Thanksgiving Eve and then uh, play Greenfield Thanksgiving morning. You think? Anybody buy that idea? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too much football. I guess. It's not a quick turn. Not, not quick enough of a turnaround time. I guess. All right, third down to ten from the twenty-three. They pitch it to Young. He'll set up halfback option. He's going to throw a deep ball, looking for Demers. Got him. Call timeout. The forty-yard line. Wow. Timeout right there. Twenty-four seconds. Boom. All right, ball down to the, the Red Hawk 40. So these kids haven't given up yet. Franklin Tech. That's, uh, that's Wozniak, uh, by the way. Nice toss by Young. That was to Hunter Wozniak. Yeah, not Demers. Demers was... Oh, he didn't take a timeout. Clock's rolling 20 seconds. And They'll clock it. Yeah. Why don't want to use the timeout there. You had plenty. Yeah. That's did not. Zero, so second down and 10 from the 40 Next yard line. So again, this uh, in terms of who's going to win, we know the deal, pieces. but a chance for Tech to get into the scoreboard one more time here. Now uh, the Red Hawks did not play their best football tonight, that's for sure. Oh, and, no, uh, they did not. Franklin Tech took advantage, and again, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with the penalties. A couple of key penalties that hurt them in this game. Just the one turnover. That was a fumble by uh, Bashaw on a bad snap from center. Shotgun. Back to pass is Bashaw. Looking left, throwing left. Incomplete. Over Malu. Colby Malu was in the vicinity, but well over his head. And he's a tall drink of water, but it was well over his head. Yeah, it's been the problem tonight again. Bashaw, strong arm, but he's sailing that thing right over Malu's head. Ten seconds left in this one, 10.8 seconds to be precise. I think he's tried to catch Melu here four or five times and has not been able to connect tonight. And the time-tested warm up the bus. I'll tell you yeah. what, if you'd warm up my car while you're doing yeah. that, then uh, I'd appreciate it. It got cold, yeah, second <laughs> half. Warm it, up my car. It got cold. <laughs> it's getting chilly. How are your toes there, Sean? They're not bad. Deep ball, left side, and incomplete. He okay, lost that in the light there a little bit. Dante Rosewarn. Hit him right off the melon. Rosewarn went to make the catch, got turned around a little bit. Got one arm up, and I think he might have lost that thing a little bit at the end, and kind of dunked him right off the head incomplete. Fourth down now. 16 pass attempts for Owen Bashaw. Just three completions tonight. Well, unless there is a defensive penalty, this will be the last play of the night. A good effort by Franklin Tech tonight. Frontier did what they had to do. They did enough, but Tech gave him a battle. And Bashaw is back to pass. Hurls it down towards the 10-yard line, and it's picked off down there. Pass intercepted. And that's how this one will end. 
Hebert on the pick. For him. And Frontier wins it. Final score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. The Frontier Red Hawks 20. And the Franklin Tech Eagles 8. Our post game show next on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we've gone final here in South Deerfield. Frontier wins it 20 to eight over the Franklin Tech Eagles. As uh, did not come without a struggle though, Sean. It was uh, one of the, you know, again, they're, they're a really terrific football team. No question about it, Frontier is. But really, I'd have to say one of the weaker performances in terms of some of the mistakes that were made holding onto the football for one thing. They had a tough time here tonight. Yeah, the first half in particular, but yeah, even in the second half, just a lot of those snaps from center ended up on the ground, and they took a lot of negative plays, which is unfrontier-like as well. That's you don't usually see those guys getting caught behind the line of scrimmage with the strength and speed they have, the way they run that offense, and boy, they had to have at least ten plays, if not more, that, that ended up getting caught behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. So, yeah, that certainly did not not help them at all. And of course, the penalties, as we talked about, a lot of penalties on both sides, and that kind of stunted Frontier's ability to move the ball up and down the field. To be honest, I, you know, I looked at this matchup and thought early that this was just going to be a blowout. I really thought Frontier had the potential to come in here and just run away with it, but credit Franklin Tech. Again, 20 to 8. Those kids battled hard and, uh, you know, break here or there, and this would have been a little bit different ball game. you got to say they competed very well in uh, Frontier. Yeah, not their best game of the season, but fortunate to come away with a win for them. All right, we're going to wrap things up here. We're going to be back on the air. We're going to be at Franklin Tech, actually, next week as we have Mahar uh, coming uh, over to Franklin Tech next Friday night. Yeah, and Mahar putting a good lick on Greenfield right now. And again, we just know with the injuries that they've had all season long. It's a, been a tough year for them. They needed to win out to even have any shot at a playoff. And uh, Mahar beating them 28-8 last we knew down there. And uh, yeah, we'll see Mahar at Franklin Tech. And that should be a pretty good game right there. All right, final score for the final time here tonight. It was Frontier 20 and Franklin Tech 8 on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. For Sean Hubert and for Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone.